first. We've all heard the claims about a deep state in the US. But if you think we're immune here in Australia, let me tell you, we're not. The whole clash between the China hawks and those who'd sell out the national interest for commercial gain is an example of the subterranean tensions that exist, some of them in the bureaucracy and political circles in Canberra. And it's not just on China where these tensions are real. To the extent that there is a deep state here in Australia, it was on full display last night on the ABC's Four Corners program. In it, a conga line of senior public servants supposedly committed to impartially and professionally implementing the policy of the government of the day, or so the legislation they're supposed to operate under says, these bureaucrats, all paid eight to $900,000 plus, well, they complained about the failure of successive governments to implement the climate change policies that they, the unelected officials, wanted Australia to adopt. Never mind the small detail of how the Australian people might have voted. Naturally, our ABC supposedly committed, as it is, to fair and even-handed reporting, but as my colleague Chris Kenny has revealed, riddled with crusading climate activists, provided an uncritical forum for these former mandarins to vent about how they were unable to bend coalition governments, Turnbull governments aside, to their will. Here's Ken Henry, Treasury Secretary for a decade, a bloke who delivered the tax reform plan, they call it the Henry Report, that included a return of death duties and who, when he left the public service, ended up as chairman of the National Australia Bank only to resign after fallout from the Royal Commission. Here he was last night commenting on the removal of Malcolm Turnbull as opposition leader because the Liberal Party rejected Turnbull's demand back in 2009 that it support Kevin Rudd's emissions trading scheme. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, just terrible. And, um, and also, you know, it was the circumstances of the rejection that it was just so obvious that this, this was a, um, a result of personal political ambition more than anything else. Now, he was, don't forget, the head of the Treasury Department at the time and supposedly impartial. But he wasn't the only one apolitical, so says the Act that governs public servants, but very much on this issue, seeing things through a very political lens. Here's Martin Parkinson, Henry's hand-picked successor as Treasury head, who Tony Abbott eventually sacked when he became PM, but who then Malcolm Turnbull brought back and made his secretary of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. What climate policy? I mean, it's basically, it's a mess. Um, it's incoherent and has been for, uh, for a decade. Incoherent? Well, maybe, Martin, that's just because you haven't agreed with how the Australian people have voted. Now, it's true John Howard sort of committed to an emissions trading scheme just before the 2007 election, but at the time, let's not forget, Malcolm Turnbull was his environment minister. But with the caveat, this is Howard's caveat, that the rest of the world had to be taking similar action and that it wouldn't damage our exporters and manufacturers. To the extent that climate change was an issue in the 2007 election, I think it was work choices, but where it was an issue... It was Labor berating Howard for not ratifying the Kyoto Protocol. Of course, having made it one big issue, well, Kevin Rudd later squibbed it when his emissions trading legislation was twice defeated in the Senate. I'll remind people here, of course, that Turnbull crossed the floor to vote with Labor after being dumped as Liberal leader. Here's Blair Comley the man Parkinson had earmarked to be the next Treasury Secretary, sacked by Abbott, but then bizarrely chosen by the Liberal Premier Mike Baird to be the Secretary of the Premier's Department in New South Wales. Well, you know, I, I was, I thought, well, you know, we've been working for two and a half years. It would have been nice to happen. I was, I was disappointed. Well, no, Blair. It's the government that sets the policy and it's the parliament that makes the rules, not the unelected, unaccountable public service. At the 2010 election, remember Julia Gillard notoriously said this. Uh, there will be no carbon tax under the government I lead. 
Only she bought it in, didn't she, because of a deal she did with the Greens to cling to office after losing her majority. Here on Sky News a couple of years ago, I said this. It wasn't a carbon tax, as you know. We made it a carbon tax. We made it a fight about the hip pocket and not about the environment. That was brutal retail politics and it took Abbott about six months before he cut through. And when he cut through, Gillard was gone. And while last night, as before, the left somehow think that's an amazing revelation, it's not. It simply says that for the first time in a long time, the coalition argued the economics of environmental policy and helped voters understand that much of what Labor proposed as climate policy was environmentally futile given Australia's 1.3% of global emissions and in cost terms unacceptably tough on ordinary households and small business. Gillard tried to pretend it wasn't a carbon tax and I'll say it again, we made it a carbon tax. We reframed the debate and we held her government to account. Even her Minister for Climate Change, Greg Combay, was forced to admit last night it was a tax. It was an emissions trading scheme um, and a carbon pricing scheme and it had a fixed price for three years that you can characterise as a tax, a carbon tax, but it was actually then transferring to a floating price emissions trading scheme. At the 2013 election, Tony Abbott could not have been clearer if elected, the coalition would scrap the tax. But here's Parkinson, remember the so-called professional and impartial public servant, talking about the day the tax was repealed. I thought it was a pretty grim day for Australia. Um, I thought it was one of those situations where don't, um, don't get too happy, guys, because we're going to be back you know, tackling this issue pretty shortly. Um, you know, we might not be tackling it in the same way, um, which means that we'll be doing it a, in a manner that's going to be more costly to the Australian people. I mean, in and around the, this time, don't forget, that bloke was the head of the Treasury Department and people wondered why Tony Abbott said he had to go. At last year's federal election, climate change was again a key issue. The result? a decisive defeat for the party that promised much bigger cuts in emissions and promising even more use of expensive and unreliable renewable power. Here's Ken Henry again on the stubborn resistance of voters to put a price on carbon. We have failed, no doubt about that. We've all failed, I think. I mean, I, I look back on it now and I, I still feel gutted. You know, all these years later, I still feel Oh, no, it's more than that. I feel angry. You know, I know that's not a good thing, and and uh, <laughs> I probably should get therapy. But uh, <laughs> but <sighs> I've, I've asked myself this question many, many times: Why do I still feel angry about it? And the reason I feel angry about it is that I feel angry about what Australia has lost. Well, plainly for Henry, for Parkinson and all the other officials the ABC lionised last night, the elected government was just an inconvenience, getting in the way of their idea of what was best for Australia and bugger what the electorate thought. Is it any wonder voters have so little faith in government when senior officials have so little faith in voters? If you want to talk about the deep state, is it any wonder that centre-right governments have so much trouble getting things done when some public servants are campaigning against them, the rest perhaps on a go slow, waiting for a Labor government to come up that's a bit more to their taste?